Welcome to everyone. This is the five tutorial. I don't know why I'm still having the four, but it's the fifth. Sorry for the typo. And today we're going to talk about advanced mini batching. In particular, first, I'm going to introduce uh, and talk with you about batch and why we need it. Uh, some general idea about batching. The problem of batching with graphs and how we can handle it and then we are gonna see how with pytor geometric we can do some advanced stuff with mini batching in particular we are gonna cover um, bipartite graphs only to have a, a, an idea on what we can do with uh, pytorch geometric and then we draw some conclusion so uh introdu introduction to batching well in deep learning, more data is better, true, it's true, but uh, are they too much? What we can do when we have too much data? In particular, we are trying to uh, compress all this huge amount of data into our RAM. And it's not good because we don't have maybe enough RAM or enough space. So uh, what we can do, we can proceed one batch at a time like and, and iterate over batches so and this is good because allow us to scale and have much more bigger data sets so uh more formally a batch refers to a set of training samples used in one iteration and here i'm gonna try to explain the difference between iteration and epochs so uh, let's start with this simple example in which we have our training data set containing uh, 12 examples, this uh, smiling uh, here in the, in the training data. What we do, we split the data set into six batches, for instance, in this case, and then we assign to each batch part of the data. In our case, since we have 12, 12 uh, samples, 12 elements, we have six batch. So it means that we will have two sample for each batch. And then what, how it works? Well, we start, we pass through our network uh, one batch, we compute the loss, we apply the back propagation, we do for the second batch, and again, loss, backpropagation, third, four, five, and six. When we did this operation up to the six um, batch, so the entire batch has been um, used. Okay, we have done with the first epoch of our uh, training. Okay, so here is the difference between iterating within a batch or iterating over all the batch and do and, and just concluding the entire, I mean, one epoch. Okay, talking about the uh, batching, there is this interesting uh, definition I founded. So given gradient descent, that is uh, an, optimization, an optimization algorithm to train machine learning algorithms, we have gradient descent that is basically we have a batch equal to the training set what does it mean that the batch size is the entire train set and it means that all the samples are in one unique batch then we have stochastic gradient descent it means that in each batch we will have one sample it means that uh, uh, yeah one sample for each batch and then we have mini batch in uh, gradient descent in which we have uh, like the previous example we have uh, uh, a given number of element for each batch okay but there is a little problem talking about graphs it's not easy uh, to i mean how can we do do this with uh, different graphs when we have multiple graphs like uh, i don't know mutag proteins uh, or stuff like that well first of all each graph has a different number of nodes 
So for instance, here I have two toy example, like this one here. And as you can see, both of them have two different uh, shape in the adiasynthesis matrices. Well, one idea could be to pad our adiasynthesis matrices. Well, like in this example, we started from with a three by three matrices representing this graph. And we padded with zeros our matrices to obtain a five by five, like in, in this sample here. But this is not so good because uh, first of all, we need to know uh, I mean, the maximum size of the graph in the, in the data set. And then we will have a, a, an unnecessary memory consumption, uh, consumption for these zero entries. So uh, what the in PyTorch geometric do? Well, basically uh, they create these uh, gigant, gigant matrix that contain blocks of matrices, okay? So for instance, I told you that we have this three by three, and then we have these five by five matrices, and we put them together, obtaining this uh, huge matrix, let me say, that is eight by eight, and it contains all the information we need, okay? So another example is this one here, in which we have nine different n different graphs, and the graphs lies in this diagonal, and then all the stuff is padded, padded by zeros. I mean, all these gray part here is zeros. Well, first of all, let's talk about the pros. Okay, uh, one of the major advantages of these is that. Uh, message passing do not require changes because as you can see here there is no connection between the elements of the first graph what what i call the adj1 and adj2 there is no connection so the graph will be uh, i mean the message passing within the first graph would not do any pro uh, will not case any problem to the uh, second graph or another graph. And second, is it true that we have many zeros, but we are representing this matrix as a sparse matrix? For those of you that uh, are not aware about what sparse matrices are, I have here just a little example. Well, suppose to have these dense matrices, as you can see, is a five by five matrix. We will have uh, only three positive elements. And instead of representing the dense matrices, we can have this sparse representation in which we have the row, the column, and the value. So for instance, row one, column two is a one row two, column four is a one, and so on and so forth. And everything is zero. Everything else is zero. What does it mean? It means that we are storing, instead of storing 25 elements, we are only storing nine elements. And, and in our case that it's a binary matrix, we can also delete the value, okay, since it's binary, and we can achieve like six elements stored in comparison to uh, to 25. Maybe here in this little example does not make, make so much sense, but in huge and real graphs, it's allow us to compress a lot our input data. Uh, okay. And how it works in PyTorch? Well, in PyTorch, it's super easy because it's already implemented in the data loader here i have a really easy example uh, in which uh, i'm first of all i'm loading the libraries as usual i'm loading this data set uh, called mutag is a uh, mutagenetics is a data set of um, molecules i think and in particular we have 188 88 uh, molecules 
each of them has uh, edge attributes uh, as uh, node features here in X. Uh, we have the classes. Uh, I don't remember if it's a binary. Yeah, it's binary classification. And then we have, for instance, the X, our uh, feature vector. And we have all the information. What we can do, we can access to, uh, uh, sorry, it's easy to see here. If we have a look to the edge index, we have two, because it's the, the source and the target node multiplied by uh, this 7442. So it's the entire graph represented in a unique edge list. We can access a unique element, for instance, the first graph just doing data set in position zero. As you can see, we have, uh, in this case, um, again, edge attributes. We have 38 edges. We have 70 nodes, uh, seven feature for each node. And we also have, of course, the label of the graph, because in this case, we are doing any kind of graph prediction, prediction task, OK? We can also access other data sets, other elements in the, the graph, OK? Like, for instance, data set in position 100. As you can see, the number of nodes change from another graph. And so far, it's really basic and easy stuff. So uh, let's talk about a little bit about data loaders. Well, remember that we have 188 graphs, OK? We can instantiate our data loader specifying the batch size. OK, suppose we are creating uh, a batch. We are instantiating the data loader with uh, the batch size uh, of 10. OK, what does it mean? It means that we, we have uh, like 18 um, batches with uh, 10 elements for each. And then we will have another batch with only eight elements, because uh, it's not, uh, I mean, 188 divided by 10, uh, it's, that is the rest, let me say. So uh, within the data loader, we can still access to our input data, the original one. But if we iterate over the data loader, as you can see, we can find that uh, the, the huge matrix, not the huge, but the, the big matrix I show you here, this one has been already computed by this operation here. OK. In fact, if you have a look uh, here, we have uh, 166 nodes that represent not one graph, but 10 graph. You can see here that we have 10 labels because we have this batch with 10 graph inside. Does it make sense? OK. And at the end, uh, what I was telling you is that we also have that the last element, since uh, we cannot divide 188 by 10 in an integer manner, let me say, the last element is 8. OK, the, the last uh, batch contains only eight graph instead of 10. And if we took, for instance, the last one, the, the one stored in data, so the, the one, this one here, we will have also these attributes specifying which node belongs to which graph. OK, so what does it mean that from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, from 0 to the 10th node, we are in the first graph. Then we are in the second graph, and so, so on and so forth, OK? And this is already done by PyTorch Geometric. So we can even change the dimension here of the batch size, like in, I don't know, 11. And as you can see, the, the, the rest the last element changes because we have all this stuff, uh, OK? 
and for instance since in the last batch we will have only one graph uh, all the nodes within that graphs will be of the same class okay so uh, in order to show you uh, that i'm not saying lies let me say i'm trying to execute uh, actually to compute the batch with 185 elements what does it mean it means that we will have two um, batches the first one with 125 uh, sorry 185 uh, elements uh, graphs and the second with only three graphs okay so if we take the second one and we plot the adiacentesis matrices what what, what basically what i'm doing i'm taking the data i'm taking the edge index i'm using this function from uh, uh, PyTorch geometric utils to convert in a diasynthesis matrices. And then here you can see that in the first uh, square here, rectangle, no, no, square, you can see that there is the first graph. Probably here we will have our second graph and the third graph. Okay. And this is automatically uh, builded from PyTorch geometric and it's I mean, personally I think it's quite useful because we just set a number here and it already computes uh, the stuff like for instance here I'm plotting 10 uh, sorry 8 because it's the last one and it's separated but that's let me say that this is a uh, basic uh, stuff Okay, uh, go back to our slides. Um, okay, let's see how we can do uh, for more complex data. Uh, present. Uh, present. Okay, so uh, suppose that we would like to represent graphs uh, uh, to, sorry, to use PyTorch geometric to work with bipartite graphs. Mm, makes sense. So uh, in bipartite graphs, we will have two sets, the one, the, the source, let me say, and the target. In this case, I called it set one and set two, okay? We have our adiasynthesis matrices that in our case is, uh, is a symmetrics because uh, is indirect, indirected, but doesn't really care at this moment. If we have a look to the edge index, uh, you can see that each edge goes from, uh, I mean, for instance, edge one starting from zero and goes to two. Okay. And you can really see the separation between set one and the set two. But uh, in reality, what is going on is that in PyTorch, since we know that the set one and the set two uh, cannot have, e uh, uh, sorry, are kind of separate sets, uh, we rewrite these uh, nodes into uh, a new form starting from zero. What does it mean? This two became a zero. The three became a one, the four became a two. And here we have this new edge index. Actually, PyTorch geometrics uh, use this kind of edge index representation for bipartite graphs. Okay. So if we are in this situation, we, and we would like to build a batch of bipartite graphs. We need to increment the set one and the set two in, in the edge index, and we have to do it in a different manner. Okay. Uh, for instance, suppose that we have these two bipartite graphs. The first representation is uh, this one zero. Uh, I mean, yeah, what I show you previously, and then we have the second uh, the synthesis matrices um the the second edge link f uh, sorry the second edge index we have to uh, scale 
set one and the set two differently because as you can see it seems that the same node zero from here and the zero from here are the same but they are not so what happened the zero became a two because we already used zero and one in the previous uh, in the same set but in the previous graph and again the one became three the two became three three became a four and here now we have our batch representation of a bipartite graph in PyTorch geometry okay uh seems that we have to do a lot of coding to do this but it's not true because uh, with uh, PyTorch it's really 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 easy okay let's see this in practice we start from creating two simple bipartite graph using uh, uh, network x i'm showing here the two graphs okay as you can see uh, already in the from network x we already have uh, the class the the, the the set in which one one node belongs to so for instance stays in zero node one in zero node two in one three and four in one okay again here we have our adiasynthesis matrix edge list and so on and so forth so uh first of all what i'm doing i'm computing the edge list in the way that pytorch likes so from zero to n from the first set and from zero to m for the second set okay and then i compute the same for both graphs but here it's really simple okay here is the interesting part i think we have this bipartite bipartite data and uh, that uh, inherits from data object from torch geometric we have our init that call the super class okay so here we are calling the data class and here we have this xs and xt what does it mean we have the x of the source and we have the x of the target because we have our two sets and what we can do simply by uh rewriting overwriting the ink in that that stay for incremental method uh, of uh, the data object and in particular uh, we specify that we have a different increment for the xs and xt we need so only doing this we can instantiate our object okay so let's see this in practice here what i'm doing i'm taking the previous edge list i computed here this edge list here and i'm converted it in a bipartite data the object i define it here okay and i i'm, I'm using a random uh, x for s and t because it's just a toy example and i also specified the number of nodes within that graph okay but it's just for i mean to have all the stuff together i repeat the procedure for the edge index b2 and at the end of the day i will have two data objects data graph one and data graph two the interesting part is here in which we instantiate the data loader we give our list of bipartite data object we define it so those here and we specify the batch size equal to two and i forgot to execute this one okay and look at this first of all we have instance uh, we have instantiated this uh, object that its own edge index uh, as xs with its own shape we have a total number of nodes is five plus five and it works and then finally if we have a look at the 
batch.edgeIndex. As you can see here, see here from, I mean, from here, this part here and this part here, the library, it's able to increment the value, the, the values of uh, uh, the edge index without doing anything because we just did this modification here. And in automatics, it builds, in fact, if we just to show you copy, uh, for instance, this one here and this one here, as you can see, the first part is identical also uh, for the target nodes. And then what we have, we have that this part here has been incremented automatically by uh, PyTorch Geometric. And this stuff here is really, uh, I mean, just to uh, show you how it's easy to extend for your purpose, uh, uh, whatever you would like to do. Okay. And uh, in the official website, you can find uh, a short uh, tutorial that show you also how to do to, with pair of graphs or multiple graphs. Uh, you have another, I mean, other strategies. But in conclusion, uh, batching allows us to scale or a uh, neural network to a larger data set. PyTorch Geometric handle simple batching and the PyTorch Geometrics allow to modify batching for special purposing like uh, bipartite graph, uh, graph matching, and many others. And yeah, this concludes this uh, really short talk about uh, advanced mini batching in PyTorch. Uh, does anyone have any question? So thank you, Antonio, for the presentation. I think it, I mean, it was not easy, it was really, really clear. So I think uh, I mean, personally I have a better idea of what, yeah, but, how that but, works and what to do. Yeah, yeah. I think then there is this kind of stuff that you have to try, even a simple example, run it, uh, not work as usual, but then you got the error and you understand. Perfect. So uh, if there are no questions, I think we can um, uh, close here.